today is day two and on day two i gonna start module number one and our module number one is firewall we're gonna start this particular module today so understanding the basic of the firewalls we're gonna start from here so what are the things that you should know about the firewall so the nature of the today's attackers are like what who are these hackers who are trying to break into your computers Today, worms, viruses initiate the vast majority of the attacks. Worms and viruses are generally find their targets randomly. Now, what is going to happen is, who are the hackers, basically? Who are the hackers? Hackers are nothing but those bunch of people who are using certain malicious softwares. And with the help of this malicious software, generally, usually, they will be a format of .exe for the windows and it's not like that mac doesn't have the viruses they do have the malwares mac also get affected with the malwares but the problem is majority of the people or the mass communication people generally use what the windows so hackers also use .exe format for those malicious software and they try to find the weakness and they're trying to find what the weakness in the legitimate users and this weakness in the world of security we call this as vulnerability they try to see this vulnerability any weaknesses are there in this particular system they try to get enter into this system and run this malicious software and hack it now generally people think what is malicious software malicious software is nothing but can be virus it can be worms it can be trojan also it can be among the three it could be spyware or adware also and all these in detail we're going to talk about when we're going to actually start with the vpns and we actually going to start with the vpns and again they will come into the next generation firewall much more in detail what are difference between so there is 100% difference between a virus a trojan a worm a spyware adware and among these generally 90% we use trojan to do what a new kind of an attack which is old one now ransomware attack ransomware attack if you if you just google it out what is ransom meaning if i'll just write it over here ransom meaning ransom meaning a sum of money demanded or paid for the release of the captive now let's say for example i have kidnapped someone xyz person and after that i'm calling his parents or her parents and asking the money for the release captive means prisoner so in release of that person or kidnap person or something like that you are asking and demanding a money for that that is called as ransom and in the world of the networking when you say that someone has done a ransomware attack that means someone has attacked your system and in return all the files will be encrypted or would have been destroyed if you want to recover from that particular situation they are going to ask you money for the same and that type of attack is called as a ransomware attack so who are the hackers hackers are nothing but who are trying to break into your network or the computer with the help of the malicious software and that malicious software can be a worm virus adware spyware could be trojan could be any kind of malicious software as a result even the organization with little or no confidential information needs firewall to protect their network from these automated attackers now the question is every company require a firewall is it true yes if you want to protect your confidential data now the next question comes is how you going to define a confidential data so it it varies from point to point see for me my slides my ppt my powerpoints are very essential so this is very 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 confidential for me i need to protect that but for my dad for my parents these ppt has of no meaning for them something related to the mutual fund is very important right so for every person to person 
the confidential information varies so there is no such definition what information is called as a confidential information what are the categories every person depending some of the bank people have their own confidential data there could be a possibility that uh, the shopkeepers have their own data we as a trainer we have our training materials which is a confidential data to us so a confidential data varies from person to person and that confidential data we need to protect it for that every company needs a firewall to protect it from the outside world saying this what is the security domain network security engineers must protect of valuable resources within a network for example a corporate data might be confidential or critical to the operation of a business or to the offering patient care in which case it must be kept from prying eyes and protect from tampering to protect these resources the network must somehow be divided into two world trusted and untrusted part the trusted portion of the network is called as security domain everything inside the security domain is protected from everything outside everything outside the domain now let's understand what is a security domain basically a security domain is the one if i write it over here basically let's say for example bob is over here gets connected with a switch then gets connected with a router over there then you have a firewall this firewall is connected towards where towards a scary internet okay connected to a scary internet now this all stuff over here this firewall this is called as your trusted zone because this is your own companies this is your own company network this is we call as a trusted network and everything on the firewall towards the internet is called as untrusted what do we call that untrusted network so the trusted portion of a company of your network is called as security domain this is called as your security so if someone asks you what is the security domain definition so security domain is nothing but the trusted portion of your network is called as security domain so the trusted portion of the network are known as a security domain everything inside the security domain is protected from everything outside the domain the most common and the effective way to protect your security domain is to place a firewall at the boundary between the trusted and an untrusted part of the network so with respect to the design 99% times firewall is a barrier between the trusted world or security domain or towards your untrusted world which is nothing but the internet so whenever you're going to take an internet connection from any xyz uh, isp in the company so you're going to first have a firewall which is going to protect as a barrier it is the one which is going to protect your security domain from the outside world and in the untrusted world only you have what the hackers you have the hackers present in the untrusted world only isn't it so you want to protect it you need a firewall to protect your security domain because in the security domain you going to have what your confidential data let's deep dive a little bit more in that so what is the basic idea the basic idea of the firewall was to provide the people in your organization with an access to dub 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 without allowing the entire world to peek in what do you mean by that let's understand this let's say for example an analogy i'm giving it over here bob joined an xyz company name of the company is xyz and when he got joined after a week he got his id card identification card now this could be a swipe swipeable or this could be a touch pin or depends on the company this bob is working in a company 
where you have multiple flows there is a main gate and then you have your security guard room let's say for example this is your security guard okay the moment the bob is going to go out for any x y z reason he want to have a cup of tea he is going out to the security guard rooms main gate this guy is going to look whether bob is having his id card or not whether he is having any badge or not he saw that okay he belongs to this particular company only let him go outside and after 10 minutes when he took his tea he is coming back this gentleman is going to do what you gonna check okay he is having his id card let me allow him to enter the room now suppose now on one day nitish also want to go into this company but i'm i'm not go i'm not having any id card or something like that the moment i gonna reach to this particular place the main gate the security guard is going to see whether i do have an id card or not i say that i don't have it so he is not going to allow me inside if i want to get inside the building i need to add an entry over there i need to tell that i am going to meet as a visitor i am coming over here to meet x y z or let's say for example i want to meet alice over there who is belongs to an hr department he is going to do a confirmation with the alice that nitish is there present outside on the main gate and he wants to connect with you is it the correct person i'll say yes it is a correct person alice is going to say yes allow nitish then only i'll be able to get entry to meet alice in that building now why i'm telling you about this example in this example this guy is nothing but our firewall security guard so what is the main agenda of the firewall again understand now this time not as a physical person bob as a pc connected with the switch connected with the router and then we have an asa firewall which is going to go towards the internet this firewall has two zones by default not by default prominently one is your trusted domain and another one is untrusted domain this firewall feature is because due to certain pre configuration firewalls are basically not as i should write here firewall firewall are pre configured by default from the factory default settings itself there are certain pre default settings are there this bob the default setting says what what a firewall main goal and main agenda of the firewall bob should able to allow to go to dub 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 that means towards the internet he should be able to go without any restriction but anyone who is trying to come from internet towards the bob he should be blocked this is what the main line what is the main agenda and the goal of firewall to provide the people in your organization with access to the internet without allowing the entire world to peek in to erect a barrier between an untrusted piece of software your organization public web server and the sensitive information that resides on your private network this is the whole soul agenda and the goals of your what firewall and what was the basic idea behind that impose a specifically configured gateway machine like firewall between the outside world and the inner inner side world which is your network internet ne internal network and all traffic must first go to the gateway where software decide whether to allow it or reject So have you seen that most of the time your bob or whatever the end user devices which is being connected over there in your internal network their gateway will be this IP most of the time not mandatory every time but most of the time your gateway will be this firewall so and this firewall will take a decision whether bob also should go out or not or whether someone from outside should come to meet to the bob or not but by default from trusted world everything is allowed to reach to the untrusted world but to the untrusted to the trusted world the traffic will be blocked by default by this firewall 
due to certain pre-configurations done on that device. Does this make sense to everyone? So a firewall is basically a metaphor. Building architects use fire walls and the fire doors as a precautionary measure to contain the damage. If a fire breaks out within one zone of the building, the firewall and the fire doors are intended to contain the fire to that zone until the firefighters can extinguish the fire. Actually, the name came from there. So at one end, everything is secure, but other end, the fire is there and that wall which is going to protect the fire, that's how the name has been given. And that was the main uh, goal also of the firewall. Similarly, the network is also being divided into too many zones with different security requirements. And in the network firewall is intended to control what passes from one security zone to the another security zone. Now saying this, this is actual the definition which we have taken from the Wikipedia. What is a firewall? So a network firewall, is a system or a group of system used to control access between the two networks trusted and untrusted network using pre-configured rules or the filters this is i have already discussed with you this is actual definition taken from the wikipedia of network firewall a firewall is nothing but a pre-configured device which make sure that the traffic from the trusted to untrusted goes without any fail but from untrusted to the trusted it is going to control it that is what basically a firewall is saying this let's talk much more in detail firewall can either be a hardware firewall can either be a software based also both the ways so virtual firewall as well as uh, as a software also as a firewall also as a hardware also they come so firewall can be called on a router if you have provided word an access list or multiple routers is being present over there a single host system like windows firewall running on the windows machine multiple hosts running the firewall software hardware appliances specifically designed to provide firewall services or any combination of that so these all are the devices which can say that these are network firewalls but they are very greatly in design functionality architecture and the cost so basically more money you give more number of features you get more features if you want it has to be a dedicated device that dedicated device can be a virtual machine then again, there are going to be restriction about the compute resources. If it's a physical device, the compute resources will be high, up and high and running. So it's totally dependent on where you want to place a firewall on the basis of the designing. What are the functions and the features you basically need from that firewall to protect you? And depending on your capex and opex also, like basically your cost all these features you have to look into the consideration and then only you order what kind of firewall you require in your production so saying this before moving further ahead i need to discuss few more things with you i believe everyone knows what is a router and i believe everyone knows now what is a firewall both are layer 3 devices by default correct now what's the difference between a router and a firewall can anyone give me an answer on that anyone by default router allows all the traffic to block the traffic we need access list but in case of firewall by default firewall blocks the traffic isn't it firewall blocks the traffic from 
untrusted world towards trusted world to allow we need access list at the basic level first difference i have told you router by default if the routes are there it is going to do the routing for you firewall also is a layer 3 device so it also goes on the basis of routes see a moment ago i said that your perimeter device will be the firewall right so your isp or internet is connected with the firewall so it has to has a capability to do the routing also isn't it so firewall also have a full fledged capability to do the routing but firewall by default blocks everything from untrusted world towards a trusted world and to allow the traffic you need to write an access list you need to make an entry on the firewall then only the traffic will be allowed this is the first difference the second difference between the router and the firewall is let's say for example you do have a router over here bob is here and you do have an alice when bob is going to reach to the alice obviously they will be in a different broadcast domain different subnet let's say for example this is 1.1.1.1 and this is your 2.2.2.2 what i'm trying to say here is if bob is trying to reach to the alice and they are trying to let's say for example exchange millions of packet or they are doing a communication over skype or they are trying to transfer any movies over there which gonna take time bob is going to create a packet packet is layer 3 so source ip will be there destination ip at layer 3 at layer 4 source port and destination port will be there and then with that your actual data that is your payload will be connected which is carrying the actual data towards the alice like this let's say for example this is the packet number 1 packet number 2 packet number 3 and so on and so forth when all the packets when the packets have the same source ip same destination ip and same source port and uh, destination port and all the packets have the same identity they make a flow and that we used to call as ip flow if anyone has heard about net flow that is nothing but this thing only it takes the information basically net flow is nothing but where you take the information about the packets what is the source ip what is the destination ip source port destination port on which interface the traffic is coming which protocol is being used to do that how many packets has been exchanged in bytes all these particular things are going to be get captured also how they do the capture by looking to an ip flow what is an ip flow when millions of packets so no one can tell that and there is no such limit how many packets should be there in an ip flow there could be more than one packet could be there and there could be n number of packets but all the packets which have the same source ip destination ip same source port destination port number they belongs to a same ip flow what i'm trying to say that if you have written an access list on a router for bob and alice let's say for example every packet of an ip flow is going to be get subjected towards an acl if there are billions of packets are there every time every packet of that ip flow is going to be get checked by the firewall or by the router my bad which increases the cpu utilization drastically very high if any device cpu is high there is a high possibility that device is going to get heated up if any device got heated up there is a huge possibility that device get into a hang status and if the device gets in a hang status or it got hung up you need to do what hard reboot that device and hard reboot will take the outage if you have not configured what the ha so generally as a best practice we avoid writing access list on the routers 
same case if i do have a ball and if i do have a firewall and then i have an alice first of all let's assume bob is a part of your security domain bob is your trusted portion part of your trusted portion and alice somewhere in the untrusted portion so first of all if bob is going to communicate with the alice because the traffic is going from trusted to an untrusted world there is no requirement it is allowed but if the traffic is coming from alice to the bob it is by default going to be get blocked to allow we need to write an access list and when you write an access list firewall is going to check only the first packet of an ip flow remaining all the packets because they have the same source ip destination ip same source port destination port number all the remaining packets are going to get allowed so only first packet un, among the billions of packet getting exchanged between alice and bob only the first packet of an ip flow on the basis of the source ip destination ip is going to be get checked so we are talking about a firewall which does the inspection at layer 3 and layer 4 is this point clear to everyone now we going to discuss the security levels how the firewall is going to do all this particular thing for us now before understanding that the security level i want to give you a few informations i believe most of you must have heard about a topic called as aci which is cisco's aci this is basically a data center product sdn software defined network and served by cisco is aci aci full form is application centric infrastructure here what i am going to emphasize on a word called as what is an application what is an application application is nothing but a software or a service a software which provide the services to the clients simple definition layman not a complicated one a software which provide a service to the client that is called as an application like the way in the world of network we have three tier of hierarchy which we call as core aggregation or distribution layer and we do have access layer in a very similar way application is also being divided into three tier of hierarchy which is web an application will have a web servers app servers and database servers what is a web server a web server is that server which is going to provide the web page for that application through a browser that is basically a web server generally on the web server on the web page you generally do the authentication by giving a username and password now try to take an example of the facebook page when you go and write https www.facebook.com the facebook web page will come there it is going to ask you what is the username you write your mobile number or maybe your what email address with a concerned password the moment the web server has authenticated you the application server is going to open that application for you where you can see the pictures of your friends where the, where you can message your friends whether you can poke you can do video conferencing you can play games and blah blah things and in the last you have a database for every uh, software for every application there will be a database server which can be provided with the help of the oracle or the sql languages now the question is why we are discussing about that we are discussing about this because you should know before moving towards the security level on a firewall you should know these three kinds of a server now coming back this topic is done i have explained you 
little bit what I need to explain. Now I'm coming back to an important topic, which is called as security level on the firewalls. Basically, the security level concept is only on one device, which is Cisco's firewall. What is Cisco firewall name? That is called as ASA. Adaptive Security and it is an appliance. Cisco's firewall name is ASA. It comes as a physical box, as a virtual box also. Which we're gonna discuss later. What are the different uh, series? What are different models? We're gonna uh, see much more in detail later into the section. But this security level concept is only limited towards ASA. Palo Alto does not have any security level concept. Checkpoint, Portigate, no, no concept of security level. Security level is only a concept on the ASA firewall. This security level has a range. And that range is from 0 to 100. Least the value is the most untrusted network you have. Highest the value, that means it is the most trusted zone you have. So generally what happens is, let's say for example, I have Bob who is there somewhere at home and he's trying to access your Facebook. Now you need to place a firewall over there. What we generally do is firewall gig interface zero slash zero. Why zero slash zero? Because O represent as outside. So best practice gig zero slash zero, zero and O resembles. So that gig zero slash zero interface will be facing towards the ISP, towards the internet and towards the outside world, where the untrusted people are there, where the hackers could be present. So obviously here, the security level will be zero. How to configure it? Let's say for example, you do have a router. How you configure the interface of a router? Interface, gig, zero slash zero. You provide an IP address to that. Suppose 1.1.1.1 slash 24, and you give what? No shut. But in case you do have a firewall, two extra commands you need to put it. Interface gig zero slash zero. You provide IP address, 1.1.1.1 slash 24. You give a name, name if. You have to give a name to an interface of the firewall, saying this is my outside interface, an outside interface, security level this is the interface which is facing towards the internet towards an outside zone so i least trust this so security level will be zero and i'll say no shut to that so on the firewall the outside interface gig zero slash zero will have the security level of zero firewall have another interface gig zero slash one and this we generally represent as inside because one and I resembles. So whenever you generally see that uh, as a best practice, whenever you join a new company, you have opened a particular firewall, you want to see that which interface is facing towards my internet network and which interface is facing towards the outside. So by looking to the interface, if a best practice has been applied on that firewall, so you can easily understand that gig zero by zero will be towards the ISP and gig zero slash one will be towards your inside segment. The inside segment, which is most trusted, your internal LAN, your security domain, the security level will be 100. And in between that zero and 100, it could be any value you can choose it. And there could be one more interface, which is gig zero slash two, which we generally take as a different zone, which we call as a demilitarized zone. What is demilitarized zone? In between of untrusted and trusted. Now why we have, uh, I started with a topic called as 
ACI and I, why I've explained to you an application because with respect to the designing web servers or your public servers web servers or your public servers the server which is for the public are generally being placed in the DMZ zone and your application servers and your database servers are generally present in the inside segment over there just a quick question can anyone tell me what will be the security level by default i'm giving you emphasis on that what is by default security level of dmz can anyone tell me what is the d level so the default security level of dmz is zero but we make it as 50. so an important note which i wanted to tell you on asa firewall any in any name if any name if apart from inside capital inside written in smaller or inside written in a combination any name if you give on an interface apart from these three words the security level is zero for inside the default automatically the security level becomes 100 remember that so dmz or no matter i write nitij or i i write c d a b whatever name it default security level is zero for demilitarized zone we make the security level as 50 it could be any value it could be one also it could be 99 also so your inside is 100 outside is zero dmz could be between 1 to 99 it could be any value but as a best practice again we take as a 50. what is this concept of the security level over here what is basically the concept of the security level security level concept says that high to low security level the traffic is always allowed but from low to high the traffic is always blocked high to low the traffic is always allowed but from low to high the traffic is always blocked so if someone let's say for example in your security zone inside i have alice also alice is also there so let me write it down if alice wants to communicate with bob the traffic will be allowed because alice is at 100 bob is present in zero high to low the traffic is allowed if alice wants to communicate with any of his own company web server the traffic will be allowed for him again the traffic is going from 100 to 50. if bob is trying to reach to the public servers of this company because bob is zero web is 50 the by default the traffic will be blocked so to allow to allow i need to write what an acl and that acl only first packet of an ip flow will be subjected towards an ac firewall remaining all the packets will be through if the first packet is allowed similarly if bob wants to go towards an app server block web server to the app servers again block you need to write an access list for the same for everything till now are we going good you able to understand guys let's understand one more thing there could be a possibility that on a firewall there are two interfaces and both let's say for example this is your inside one and there is inside number two and both have the same security level now what is going to happen if two interfaces have the same security level by default that traffic is also going to be get blocked same security level same security level 
ट्रैफिक इज ब्लॉक बाय डिफॉल्ट सेम सिक्योरिटी लेवल द ट्रैफिक इज ब्लॉक बाय डिफॉल्ट what we need to do if you want the same security level traffic needs to be get allowed you need to write a global command global command is required if you want to allow the traffic between the same security level and the command is also very straightforward same security level or same security traffic basically permit inter inter not intra okay inter interface very important command can be come in your cci lab also so please make a note of this same security traffic permit inter interface with this command it's a global command it's not under any of the interface it's a global command the moment you give this particular command the traffic between the two interfaces having the same security level will be allowed for you so let's say for example i have two more interfaces dmz1 and dmz2 here also 50 here also 50 so between these two interfaces also the traffic will be allowed but there is no such provision made that you want to block only the traffic between the dmzs but you want to allow the traffic between the inside there is no such global command as will as if now there either it will be blocked for everyone or the moment you put this command it will be allow for everyone as simple as this there is no middle provision you want to manipulate certain things then again you write the access list but by default with one command it is not going to be get done so a global command when you have put over there which is inter interface it will be allow the traffic between all the interfaces having the same security level if the command is not there it will be blocked for everyone also so that is your inter interface the another situation could be that we'll see later maybe after 3 weeks when we'll start with the vpn there could be a possibility that on a firewall the traffic ingress ingress interface and the egress interface is the same that means a traffic coming on it let's suppose gig 0 slash 1 the traffic coming on gig 0 accepted on gig 0 slash 1 and traffic has to leave the same interface if you are not able to collect this information try to understand with the let's say for example router on stick on the ccn routing and switching you must have seen that same pretty much kind of concept here in the world of the vpn we call this as hair pinning which we'll see later in segment i'm just trying to explain one simple don't go into hair pinning and all i'm just trying to give you a simple example if a traffic received on an interface and the traffic has to leave the same interface on which the traffic is being received the traffic again by default is blocked if you want to allow the traffic you need to write a command which is called again as same security traffic permit now this time intra interface there is a difference in the command one is inter interface one is intra interface so intra interface is that command which allow the traffic when it's being received on the same interface and the egress interface is the same inter interface is that command which allow the traffic between the two interfaces having the same security level does this two combination or the two commands or the two concepts is also clear to everyone let me know on the chat point now i believe everyone knows what is a hub and what is a switch there is a difference between that right hub any times it receive a packet it is going to broadcast in all the interfaces switch is little bit intelligent right why because it has a capability of learning the things what it learns it learns the mac addresses 
it learns the mac address learned on which a vlan in which vlan on which interface whether it is being learned on a static way or a dynamic way and for how long the aging timer will be shown over there these are the few things that every switch and it's when you do show MAC address table dynamic, you also show MAC address table VLAN on my show MAC address table interface. You will see these five basic information about that. So switch learns the thing and that's why switch becomes an intelligent device then on hub. Why I'm explaining this because this is related to my next topic. Now, before moving to the next topic, I want to discuss TCP. I believe everyone must in this particular group heard about TCP. TCP is basically a connection oriented protocol, right? TCP is basically has its handshakes. And that handshake we call as what? Sin. Sin plus ACK. An acknowledgement. I believe everyone knows that. What I'm trying to discuss here is one more little bit step ahead of that. Might possible you also know about this. What is ISN in TCP? Or what is initial sequence number? Anyone knows about that? What is initial sequence number? Heard about it? Let me know on the chat window. Anyone has heard about ISN in TCP? Yes, no. No problem whether you have heard it or not. If you heard it, also fine. Yes, TCP, yes, initial sequence number. Let's say, for example, there is a client who is trying to initiate a TCP connection towards the server. Let's say, for example, the port number is 80. The client is always trying to reach to the servers most of the time. There are certain say, scenarios like when you talk about metadata and big data. The traffic goes from where? The traffic would be going from the servers towards the client. But 99% client sends the traffic towards the first packet. And the first packet is always the SYN packet. Now, what is the SYN packet? In the SYN packet, there will be a synchronization. This is whether boss, I'm trying to connect with you. Are you able to see my packet or not? That is basically this particular thing. So what I'm trying to say in this, in every SIN packet, there will be a value and that is called as ISN, initial sequence number, which is nothing but a randomly generated number. Let's say for example, when the client has sent a SIN packet towards the server in that the initial sequence number is 24. And that packet will be received by what? The servers over there. Now, what server is going to do? Server is going to acknowledge that request of the client and he will say, I acknowledged it. How client will come to know that whether the SYN packet to whom I have sent is the correct server who is acknowledging me or the correct server who is trying to reply to me is by that number. So acknowledgement, whenever the server is going to send to the client, he has its acknowledgement number in that and that will be nothing but the ISN plus one. So 24 plus one is equals to 25. So if client received 25 as an acknowledgement number, client will come to know that the correct server has sent me the acknowledgement to whom I have initiated the TCP connection. But the question is, how server will come to know that whether I am sending the acknowledgement to the correct client or not. That's why he also sent a SYN packet. Again, that SYN packet will have a randomly generated initial sequence number. And let's say, for example, this time this is 64. So the moment the client received the acknowledgement 25, he got to know that I got a reply from the correct server. Now it is my responsibility to tell the server that I received it. And let me tell you the last third handshake, which is 
acknowledgement and in that acknowledgement he will send the acknowledgement number that is 65 so by that server will come to know that yes to whom i acknowledge has again acknowledged me saying that okay boss i have received your acknowledgement and this is your tcp three way handshake now the question is why we are discussing about that if you got a little bit idea about this let me start my lecture now with that if i do have a firewall now in transit between the same client which we have discussed a moment back and our server and now you know the security level is this isn is unique or it if any other client also send the same no it's a randomly generated unique number okay so if the client is sending now again he wants to uh, create what or uh, connect with the server over a tcp let's say for example port number 80 or 443 whatever you like to do it on firewall gig 0 slash 1 now i believe you understand one stands for inside and any name if inside apart from inside the security level will become what zero so inside is having what the security level as 100 firewall gig zero slash zero this is towards outside where the server outside world is there and the security level is what zero over here if this client wants to send the traffic towards the server the traffic the first packet which goes is the send packet and that SYN packet will be allowed for sure. Why? Because the traffic is going from higher security to the lower security level. Decade ago, when the firewall used to be there, the problem is there with TCP or any ICMP also, ping, eco reply, eco request, there is a problem. What is the problem with this particular firewall? When the SYN packet is allowed, why? Because the traffic is coming from high to low. But this firewall, when allowed this SYN packet to pass through him, he does not have the capability to learn anything from that packet. It is just like a blank. Okay, you are coming, go. No problem, I don't want to make an entry for you. What happens with that? If the firewall is not making an, any entry with that, the return packet which the server is going to send, which is SYN plus acknowledgement, now the traffic is coming from where low to high this firewall is going to drop that sin plus act packet why because the traffic is coming from low to high there is no entry on the firewall stating that the traffic has been initiated from the trusted world only and if you want to allow the traffic if you want to allow now the traffic you need to write an access list So that becomes quite cumbersome. That becomes a nightmare for all the network security engineers. For every return traffic, they have to write an access list. This kind of firewall used to call us stateless firewall. Later, the new kind of firewall that has been introduced to the world is called as stateful firewall. Now, what is stateful firewall? Try to understand the very same scenario. What's the difference between a hub and a switch? The very same difference is there between stateless and stateful. Stateful firewall does what? The moment the client is going to send the TCP SYN packet towards the server, the first packet, this firewall is going to make a table for that like switch makes a table when it learns the mac address and the name of the table is called as what mac address table in a very similar way whenever a firewall makes a table that table is called as connection table and in that connection table the moment this sin packet is going to pass through the firewall from higher security to the lower security this firewall is going to make a table for that that means i got a packet the source of 1.1.1.1 1 
destination of 2.2.2.2 .2 .2 .2 source port 56789 a randomly generated port number destination port number let's suppose 80 <clears throat> http the moment this packet is being received by the server server is going to reply it and that packet is sin plus ac the moment firewall receives a sin ac it checks its connection table whether i do have an entry related to that he got to know that okay this firewall is a little bit intelligent. He has learned the packet entry. He has done the packet entry and it's the reply of the sin. So no matter it is coming from lower security to the higher security because the connection has been started from the trusted world to the non-trusted world, this packet should be allowed to reach to the client and in the last, the acknowledgement has to be sent over there. So the return traffic will be allowed if the traffic has been initiated from the trusted to the non-trusted world that type of firewall where the return traffic is allowed is called as stateful firewall that type of firewall which builds a connection table is called as stateful firewall is this point clear to everyone i hope you got an idea what is a stateful firewall? Now, a stateful firewall is that firewall which builds a connection table. Now, when you see a connection table, anyway, how you will come to know that whether through that particular firewall only the SYN packet has been sent or the SYNAC is has been done or the entire three-way handshake is done or the three-way handshake is done now the data plane is going on how will come to know about that for that there is a concept of flags in firewall what is that concept of flags so there are certain flags that i want you to make a note of that which is important First, write the abbreviations for that. Small s. Small s stands for small s, it's not capital. Awaiting for outside sin. Small s. Okay. Then comes small a awaiting for outside acknowledgement then comes capital a awaiting for inside acknowledgement awaiting for inside acknowledgement capital s awaiting for inside sin Okay, awaiting for what? Inside sin. Then comes what? U. Three way handshake. Done. Then comes I. Inbound data. Then comes O outbound data these are your tcp flags for a firewall which is very important to understand please make a note of this once done please acknowledge on the chat window with the keyword called as d i'll move further ahead for the explanation so have a look in this diagram so i have a client and a server the moment the client is going to send the first packet towards the server that packet is going to be sent the moment the sin is being received by the asa he will build a connection table with the ips and the port numbers something like this inside i received 1.1.1.1 1 .1 .1 .1 .1. outside is 2.2.2.2 .2 .2 .2 .2. 
port number of inside is a random port number let's say for example 1 2 3 4 5 6 outside port number is 80 destination port number destination ip des source port number source ip and it will make a flag of s a a have a look to the abbreviations if this kind of a flag for this particular entry you see on a firewall assume that not assume understand that he is waiting for outside sin he is waiting for outside acknowledgement and the third packet which is third third message of the tcp three way handshake it is waiting for the inside acknowledgement also that means from this firewall or through this firewall only sin packet has been transferred or traversed from this firewall the moment the server is going to send the sin plus ACK, the firewall is going to check whether I do have the entry for this return traffic or not. He will see that yes, I do have an entry because this firewall is a stateful firewall. And let me say that sin plus acknowledgement has been received. So the, for the same entry, now the flag will just remain as what A. That means outside sin and outside acknowledgement has been received. And in last, when the client is going to send the last packet, which is acknowledgement, the moment the acknowledgement has been received, that means this A which was pending, the ASA is going to change the flag to U. Saying what? Three-way handshake is done. And once the three-way handshake is done, when the client has started the data to and fro could be data from inside to outside or outside to inside. So the flag will see like this, UIO. UIO flag means three-way handshake is done and incoming and outgoing data plane has been started. That means actually on the port number 80, the client is trying to reach something to the or trying to serve something on or HTTP get post commands has started data plane has been started over there. This is your basically flags, which is very important concept on the ASA firewall. This is very important concept on the firewall. These flags are very important. Now I'm going to this flag universe. This is for Cisco ASA. This is for the Cisco ASA we are talking about, okay? John? This is only for Cisco ASA TCP flags. Now, one more thing, which or uh, one more keyword which you need to add is B in the last. In the last, just add to your list B. B means initial sin. from outside initial sin from outside yes they will be different they will be different even ftd will be different okay so what is this b initial sin from outside that means if in a case on your outside there is bob and inside now there is a server right and now bob is trying to reach to the server the first packet will be s a a b in the last a b u b u i o b like this if you are seeing b in the last of any of the flags of any of the flag in the last you are seeing B blindfoldedly understand that the traffic is coming from lower security to the higher security if there is no B in the last and you are seeing SA a u u i o something like this understand okay these are the traffic started from higher security to the lower security level and how the connection table looks like have a look over here show connection table in this connection table if you have closely look over here 
TCP. If you don't see the flags, right? If you don't see the flag, none of the flag, if you see it over here in the last, you will not be able to tell if you don't know about these flags, trust me, if you don't have any idea about these flags, you can never tell about that, whether the traffic on this ASA firewall is coming from outside this IP and going towards inside, or the traffic is going from inside to outside. By looking to the flags only, you can determine that. Now the traffic is going from where? SAA. There is no B in the last. And that means from this IP, which is inside, which is higher security level, from this IP, someone is trying to reach to this particular IP. And only between them, SIN packet has been gone. Again, let's say for example, in this particular day, this DMZ and outside. That means somewhere from higher security level is DMZ. From this IP, someone is trying to reach to this particular IP on the outside segment on the port number 80. You can see that. And they are started, they have done or they have started doing the communication over the data pipe. How the B looks like, I will just add it over here if you want. In this in this slide itself. Or I'll show it on the Google. Like this, or over here. Yeah, be something like this. Have a look. If you see S A A B in the last or U I O B in the last, blindfolded, you understand that means someone from outside has initiated the traffic towards inside. If under U I O there is no B, that means traffic has initiated from DMZ towards the outside. Does this make sense to everyone? This is very important concept. I hope I made justice to this. So in this particular output, you can see that the TCP flag is SAA. There is no B. That means the traffic is coming from higher security level to the lower security level. That means what? What we can assume. So one is inside, one is outside. So that means inside is higher security. So this is my source IP. This is my source port number. This is my destination IP. And this is my destination port number. And this is SAA. That means only the SYN packet has been allowed as of now. And here itself, we can see the abbreviation. Small a, which I've asked you to write it down, awaiting outside acknowledgement to the SYN. Small s will be somewhere here. Small s, where is that small s? Can I see small s awaiting outside SYN? U means TCP three-way handshake is up. Capital I means inbound traffic started. Capital O means outbound data has been started. Capital A means awaiting inside SIN. And C, B, initial SIN from outside world. That means lower security level. John, this is cleared. Everyone, this is cleared. Flags, understand from here. SIN, if the client is inside, and server is outside, lower security level. SYN packet goes, the flag will be SA. Acknowledgement come, S and small a gone. Outside SYN and outside acknowledgement has been received. A, TCP three-way handshake is done. Inbound traffic, inbound outbound, both the traffics, UFIO, finished messages, and so on and so forth. And whenever the server is inside and client is outside, everywhere in the last, there will be an abbreviation called as B. Remember that. So if you see B, it is not mandatory. The traffic is always coming from outside to inside only. It can be from DMZ to inside. It could be from outside to DMZ also. Does this make sense? That means whenever the traffic is coming from lower to higher, 0 to 50, low to high, DMZ to inside, 50 to 100, outside to inside, 0 to 100 there will be always B in the last. SYN packet initiated from the lower security level. Sabrish, this is clear. So I do have an ASA firewall over here. We'll do the configuration from the scratch later into a segment. Today already one firewall is there. I just wanted to, my bad. One of the firewall which is being present over here. 
let me configure some other firewall right here because this is a different one. If I have an access, no, I don't have an access for that. I need to restart the machine. Okay, let me just use this only. When you enter into the file, this is not the initial configuration, okay? I wanted to explain you few things. That's the only reason. On this firewall, how many interfaces are there? Let's understand that. Show interface IP brief. There are certain interfaces and certain interfaces I've already configured. What I wanted to do is... Uh, I'll show you that interface which is not being configured interface gig zero slash two. Yeah, so we'll see about from here. Show interface gig zero slash two. Yep. This is what we're going to see now. I'm not showing you the configuration. I just wanted to make you understand certain important points before moving further at being a CCI. So when you do a show command on any on the interfaces, what is the output which is showing out over here? Interface which I'm showing is gig zero slash two. Then there is an apostrophe or you can say that columns are there. If I show the same thing for a different interface, just one which is already being configured, you can see that in that column, there is a name if. See the difference. So if any interface, you have not given a name if, that will be shown to you as a blank, okay? It is admin down as well as line protocol is up because this is being connected to something, but it is no shut is not given. Hardware is, I 825 uh, em So every machine, every device in the world, if it's a layer three or layer two, behind every port of that device, there is a chip which we call as ASIC, which is called as application specific integrated circuit if it's a switch it's a layer 2 switch then only asic will be present if it's a layer 3 device or layer 3 switch asic along with that cpu will be present because cpu does the routing and asic will do the switching or the normal things that's the reason switching is faster than routing why because switching is done at the hardware level router is being done at the software level so what i'm trying to say that behind every port there is an ASIC and that ASIC usually for all the Cisco devices or any other vendor also will be done either by Intel or AMD. If you see behind that particular chip starts with I, that means this microprocessor chip is being made by Intel and this is that processor ID. With that, the revision number is one. That means that processor is being done only once. In Nexus box, if you have heard about it, or Catalyst new model 6800 series, the revision number is five. That means that chip has been five times revised. The bandwidth of this particular gig zero slash two is 1000 Mbps. And the delay could be of 10 microseconds. Auto duplex, which is full duplex and auto speed by default is being set to this. Then comes your input flow control is unsupported and output flow control is off. What do you mean by this? For that, we need to go in a history. I believe everyone must have heard about a term called as Ethernet. What is Ethernet? Ethernet is a technology. Now, before doing this, I just wanted to give an example over here. I'll stop recording. Two examples which I have given over here of the recording. I want to say that the one which I have told an analogy with the example of train, that technology try to understand is called as Ethernet. 
and the another technology which i told you with the name called as nithij i used to take like this in the lecture in data center and this technology is called as fiber channel if you heard about it anyone have heard about it this is called as fiber channel now what do you mean and understand by that whenever you heard the word called as ethernet okay ethernet is tx and rx tx is the one who is always going to initiate tx is the commander tx will start sending the packets tx will always initiate the things for that but in the world of fiber channel rx is the commander rx starts sending first packet towards the tx it's vice versa this technology is totally different what used to happen is earlier days ethernet was doing very good they started i'm not going way to in detail but i'm saying 10 mbps they were doing very good then they moved to 100 mbps they were doing good the moment they were there on the 100 mbps bandwidth right long time back this is maybe 20 years or two decades ago long time i'm talking about or maybe three three decades ago when 100 mbps was there everything was going smooth ethernet is a technology which is defined under ieee standards there are certain bunch of people who have created their own group like ieee and that organization is called as t11.org t11.org organization under this organization a technology has been developed that is called as fiber channel and this fiber channel the moment they hit the market they directly hit with 1 gbps fiber channel because rx and tx formula was there if you remember tx and rx this is your ethernet this is your fiber channel every port every port or no matter it's a switch it's a router it's a firewall it's a nexus every port has a concept of buffer size or voqs whatever you want to say that buffer size let's hypothetically you assume that rx has the capability at a given moment of a time rx can take 10 frames at a given moment or 10 packets at a given moment depending on layer 2 or layer 3 device if tx has sent 10 packets all 10 packets can be processed because they will be in a buffering in a parking lot try to understand like this and one by one they are going to get processed by chance tx has sent 15 packets so the five packets because rx has the capability to receive only what the 10 packets at a given moment of time the moment the extra five packets has been received rx is going to drop it now you going to say that sir tcp is what connection protocol connection oriented tcp says that if any packets get dropped resend it isn't it you have a concept of windowing also that came later i'm talking way too long back window is come later into the segment so these five packets is going to be get dropped because the buffer size of the rx is only 5 uh, 10 frames per per given moment of a time five packets are going to be get dropped again the tx is going to Yeah, this is where the frame analogy I have given. He knows English and the everything, but he started communicating with the Eva, and then Eva said that I don't understand what you are saying in English. I know only what Russian. What fiber channel does it before any communication to get start? RX automatically. How that is a huge process. That is process called as floggy, floggy, and all. But I am not going into that. This RX. is going to tell this is the case which i have told you about nitaj rx will tell tx prior to that boss my capability is only 10 frames if you are going to send the 10 frames and above i am definitely going to drop it so tx knows no matter tx capability is to send 20 packets but now he knows that my partner has the capability to receive only 10 packets at a given moment of a time i'll send only 10 packets that's the reason fiber channel was known into the market as a lossless protocol and ethernet got a bag at the background that is it is lossy by nature
So the moment the fiber channel, the T11 organization has introduced a concept of 1GB, they have introduced directly 1GBPS. Those companies who have the budget, the very critical data where the speed matters a lot and the packet should not be dropped, the traffic has been or the people have started moving towards this and this is the place where actual your term in the networking world comes migration migration has started from there now we are doing a migration what migration you are doing we are moving from ethernet to the fiber channel and obviously if you are moving to from ethernet to the fiber channel that means your devices also are going to get changed isn't it so the moment this is one gbps Ethernet or IEEE, the people have started losing their particular business. The moment they could do anything, fiber channel people or T11 people were so smart, they have launched not 2 GBPS and they were still struggling at what 100 Mbps. Then what happened is, few more people have started now 2 GBPS. How many times more faster? You can imagine here it's a 10 times, so here 20 times more faster than the ethernet plus lossless everyone started slowly slowly moving over there they could do anything they have introduced 4 gbps and within six months of again the time span 8 gbps they have introduced then before 8 gbps they have introduced 1 gbps Your company recently completed this migration. I'm, <laughs> might be. I'm telling you a scenario. So the moment they came to the one GBPS, they have already reached what T11 have moved to eight GBPS over there. Now they stopped for a while. These guys has to I triple engineers have to do something. Then they did what? They launched one big space and then they tell ten GBPS directly directly 10 gbps they have jumped it and this 10 gbps with a concept of pause frame what is this pause frame tx and rx the same concept of ethernet rx capabilities to receive 10 frames at a given moment of a time the moment tx has let's say for example sent 11 frames or 12 frames or 12 frames he has sent the moment rx has received 10 frames immediately rx is going to tell tx pause my buffer is full my buffer is full if you still gonna send it i'm going to drop it so tx got to know okay 10 packets has been done buffer is full let me stop at 10 packet only okay let me stop at 10 packet rx buffer is full and the moment rx has processed all that particular uh, packet it is going to send another packet which is called as resume then again tx will start it so at 10 gbps i triple e introduces over there and this is a technology this is not only the speed from here the evolution of fcoe i don't know whether anyone has heard about it and i'm not making you bore there is a concept behind this which i'm coming in, in next two minutes fcoe has started from this 10 gbps the moment they're given 10 gbps they move to 16 gbps they move to 32 gbps they move to what now 40 gbps now they're giving neck to neck now people again started doing migration from fc to where towards ethernet why ethernet is more easy to understand documents are easily available the devices are easily available everyone has started its career his or her career from the ethernet only 40 gbps is more than 32 40 gbps with lossless which they were giving 40 gbps which is cheap because fiber channel is totally over fiber optic cable which is basically made of fiber or glass obviously it has to be exp uh, expensive because it is going on the light the moment they could do anything they have eventually given the market 100 gig they were still struggling on 32 they have given then what 200 was there they now introduced 64 they have given 128 they have given 400 now you would have seen 5g and all one one terabyte and so huge uh, bandwidth has been given so what is the conclusion that you can see as if now whenever you see a, a 1 2 4 8 16 32 64 128 blindfoldedly understand it's a fc world 
whenever you see one 10 100 200 blindfoldedly understand it is ethernet technology this is one tip which this is the topic basically of data center which i take in the data center but i am coming to a very important point this pause frame from where the ethernet has grabbed the market again coming back to this input flow control and output flow control is off that means this particular port of this firewall does not support the concept of the pause frame i could have easily told you in one minute but i've taken 15 minutes to explain you this line because this is important the latest models like ftd high-end ftds they support asa does not support your pause frame concept so that means this is like a legacy one this is like this is like what one gbps right because the maximum bandwidth is still one mbps if it would be 10 if it would be 40 or 100 gig ports which is now easily available in the data centers this would be enabled so if this is enabled you need to configure the pause frame commands also something like that but on this box it is not supported mac address is this what is the mtu size is this i'll go on a little bit top which we were discussing about yes available but not configured that means name if is not configured as well as the ip address is not configured have you look over here here the ip address as well as mask is configured but on gig 0 slash 2 that's why i have started showing with that interface which is not configured factory default setting so available but not configured that means ip address is not configured eventually name if is also not configured this is the mac address of this particular gentleman mtu by default is 1500 but because this interface is not configured mtu is not set ip address number of packets somehow is being received no buffer zero buffer no concept of the pause frame received zero broadcast zero runs runs means a packet size below 64 default is 1500 mtu less than less than 64 if any packet received by a firewall whose packet size is less than 64 that is called as run that means zero runs has been received zero giants any packet greater than 1500 till 9216 or 9000 jumbo frames that is called as giant frames over there zero input errors cyclic redundancy check i believe everyone knows frame overrun ignored pause input can you see resume frame and pause frame this is what i was telling you because this interface does not support the concept of the pause frame that's why this will always remain as a zero then comes your l2 decode drop this is sometimes being asked into the interview by the tag people what is l2 decode drop let's say for example i have configured my interface gig 0 slash 2 i have given an ip address also let me show it to you if i can show interface gig 0 slash 2 ip address let's say 2020 20 and i have given no shirt that's it now if i again do show interface gig 0 slash 2 you can see that eight packets has been increased from zero if an interface if an interface has been configured with ip but if you have not configured the name if the packet will be dropped so if you see a l2 decode drop increase the counter is getting increased immediately understand boss you have made this interface up you have given an ip over there but somehow you missed to give a name if so l2 decode drop means packet the interface is up ip is given but the packet are dropped because the name if is not configured remember that so if i'll just go back interface gig 0 slash 2 i'll give name if now this is also what i want to tell you any name apart from inside security level will become zero otherwise it will become can you see that oh inside is already being assigned to that Mm, i'll give another i cannot give that now i have to give inside one 
inside is already been taken in my segment so if i'll show interface ip brief there will be one interface which has been taken as inside so that's the reason i was playing around with this by default security level is 100 only so i'll, I'll change that also just to show you interface gig 0 slash 1 name fs net is all the way okay come back to interface gig 0 slash 2 our original one name fs inside name if is inside one gig zero slash three i just want to show you once see for first time on any interface if you put a security a name if as inside by default it is going to take 100 any other name any other name if i'll go gig zero slash four and i'll give name if nitij zero oh nitij is also given okay i was taking morning lecture that's the reason dev zero interface gig zero slash five name if is dmz i think this is also being given dmz is not given but still you can see that dmz default security level is zero now if you want to change the security level the command is security level 50. that again i'll much more in detail when we'll start doing the configuration i'll show you so my today's lecture what i wanted to show you i wanted to give you an explanation of these things but this, I gonna end for day two.